You were good. We're back. Oh, we're here for the first time. Yay. Yay. We had some technical difficulties, world, but that's okay. But you see, you're still muted. She's getting a little bit of feedback, so she's embarrassed. Yeah, but Medusa, we do love you. Just unmute it really quickly if you want to say something. Uh, I like, I like butts. And See, butts. Not that, the feedback's not that bad. Yeah, just give it a I try. I have to agree. I like butts too. Yeah, yeah. butts and cat butts. Cat uh, butts are pretty. I got some cat butts. I would love to see your cat butts. I know. I'll get them. They're sleeping, but. Um, Today, before Kyle told me that we weren't live, uh, I want to talk about uh, what we all use as artists, like um, painting, drawing, like what are our actual tools, like our pencils and our brushes that we love. And also, I'm really curious about how tattooers um, get back to work after such a big event like the holidays or the stress of it all. And we have to like kind of get back in the groove after. Like, I've just been drinking, to be honest. <laughs> drinking wine and eating carbs that I shouldn't. And I feel like hell right now. But, yes. Yeah, like, I feel, like, kind of shaky. And I'm like, oh, because I've eaten sugar and, like, a lot of it. <laughs> and I'm not supposed to. Cheese and. Oh, I've had so, so much eggnog. Oh. <laughs> so much eggnog. It's like. It's a guilty pleasure, I guess, that we allow ourselves to that, go. That hang. once a year. Yeah. I always drink two bottles of wine last night. I don't even know how I did that. You nice. Right. Well, you never like recorking one. It's not like it's going to be good after it's been open. You just have no, to finish it. it. And if you're finishing one, why not finish two? Like, right? And you better go home. home. Yeah, you're not alone, so therefore it's not a problem. Um. <laughs> Most bottles of wine are maybe three glasses anyway. Mm -hmm. So it, a bottle isn't really a bottle of wine. It's just a couple glasses of wine. Yeah, they're small bottles, reasonable, normal size, average. You know, they also make those glasses that are just the bottle with the club attachment. That's technically only one glass, too. That's, yeah, technically, that's it is. Yes. <laughs> that's professional <laughs> Kyle, <I haven't laughs> seen such a long time you got i know new, it's been a minute you got some new specs you got a little mustache going look at you you get the ohio sunshine off your skin yeah yeah oh yeah that nice uh negative five degree sunshine yeah. uh Kyle, what would you know about wine you're like 15 <laughs> <laughs> i drink i drink boxed wine on the weekend you know Ah, <laughs> what is yeah. it? Shutter Farms or something? It's uh, it's the Boda Box. Franzia, the Boda are... Box. <laughs> not that bad. See, Those they're not bad. bad. They're really not. That's a good deal. Exactly. Yeah, Boda's drinkable. I yeah. drank that too when I was in high school. If you see me at conventions walking around with a black box at the bar, I'm just cheap, and I bring my, I just bring my own. And you're more than welcome to ask me for a glass because I will give you one. Um, but that's usually my MO. If everyone's going out and partying, you know, if it's going to be that kind of convention, I am not spending money at the bar. And I will just go out and get like a boxed wine and just carry it around like a purse. And they're like, you're wine? Anyone? Wine? So that's a that's little That's a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I yeah. usually just tuck a little Jameson in my purse. Oh, see, no one wants that. I, I'm... I've told the whole Red Tree crew that they, they should never, ever see me drink whiskey or any any of my friends know this, that I just shouldn't ever <laughs> drink whiskey. I have the Superman complex and I think I can do anything I want. And it's always- Tequila about. does that to me. Oh yeah, yeah. Tequila's fun. But no, um, I don't know. Like even with this, like I know I have to mentally prep myself, you know, after- everything to like okay i have to be tomorrow uh not only a tattooer i have to be an artist i have to be on my game i have to be a boss i have to be you know i have to be all these things so i'm like i kind of know what my tools are that i have to kind of get myself back in the game but i'm really curious like what do y'all do um and yeah actually kyle you have to go soon don't you i can make you go first uh, not necessarily. I'm just hanging out. I wasn't doing anything before, so. 
Oh, okay. Well, go first. What you doing? What you using there? What you drawing on? Um, yeah, I, I honestly had no idea what I was drawing. So I currently just have this little triangle um, on my iPad here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, starting mm -hmm. some kind of fantasy landscape. But you know, it always starts with some good shapes. It always does. Yeah. So you start with shapes. You mm -hmm. prefer the iPad a lot lately. You've been doing the iPad a lot lately, haven't you? Uh, it's convenient, mostly like out of convenience. I have uh, like all my oil paint set up at the warehouse. Um, mm -hmm. So when I'm there, that's like, I get all my oil painting done there. And then at home I have like color pencils as well as uh, the iPad. Have you done anything new? Have you posted anything or are you working on, cause I've been looking, I've been looking for your new stuff that you can come out with. I, uh, I don't post that often. I do, mm -hmm. I, I am, I am still working though. Yeah. I post like once or twice a week. Okay, good. Yeah. So but I'm still, me. I'm still working away. Good. Trying okay. to at least. Yeah. How do you feel? Um, like, how do you get yourself in that mindset? Cause even, even though you're not a totter yet, like you mm -hmm. have to have that mindset walking into red tree of like, I'm going to be a productive human. Today. Yeah. Well, I mean, part of it too, is like being able to set up there and having that environment to work in that, like that really helps um, kind of put me in the right mindset. Cause it's like, okay, I'm out here in the warehouse. I'm sitting at my little table. I got everything I need. It's like, it's always set up, ready to go. So it's like, just sit down and work. Okay. That's a and good so thing. that, that definitely helps is just having it set up and everything laid out. That's a good tool. Um, yeah. I find that I won't paint if I have to actually get out all my stuff, you right. know? Um, and for all the people who know that I watercolor or that I do oil, if you're very intimidated about and you don't have a space for oil and you have to like get it out and set it up through some just watching these players, um, grab another medium that's fast and easy. Like today I was like, Oh, I, I can't, mine's all at my studio too. So at home, I know that I can just whip this out. It's here. I can just put it down and stare at it and get some work done. And then therefore I'm being a professional artist because I'm actually working. And it's, that's what it's all about. It's like just doing it in the action. So that's a really good tip of just having like a mod, like something stationary um, that you can quickly set up and just get into it and get involved, you know? That's cool. I'm excited to see your stuff though. Your stuff has been really cool lately. Thank you, I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. But yeah, like you were saying with that, it's like, I've got all like, I got my palette of oil paints already laid out. So all I have to do is just show up and grab a brush and start going to work. Right. So it's definitely, it really is helpful to have that just set up and ready. Mm -hmm. That's why I love my studio. It's the same. Like I know that I have this little corner, super safe. It's kind of away from any clients or anyone that could come in and see it. But um, I know I can just sit down at any time, open up my jars and I'm ready to go. So cool. Amber, uh, what are you working on? Do you have any? I'm not even sure. I'm just trying to get myself back into the swing of things. Oh, yeah. Um, I've been in painting Christmas card mode for weeks. So now I, I'm like, I get to paint what I want. And now I'm like, I don't know what I want to paint. No Douglas birds. No, no more Christmas trees. No more baubles. No more snowy peaks. <laughs> <laughs> um. I heard something really cool. Um, I can't remember what it was on. And uh, maybe this will give you some inspiration. Um, a good leeway anyways. But I heard this thing. I don't know anyone else's. But um, so has anyone really thought about like Christmas and like where it comes from in the folk art, like the visual aspects of it? Because you, like, mm -hmm. you have the Christmas tree, right? You have the Douglas fir. Then you've got these like, white and red like presents all underneath the christmas tree right and then there's like reindeer that are flying in the sky right and so i heard this this theory that those white and red mushrooms the really toxic crazy mm -hmm. one like grows naturally un underneath the douglas fir and reindeer eat those mushrooms so like they're all like this symbiotic weird environment and I'm just sure that someone once just ate the mushroom too and was like oh my god there's reindeers flying in the sky uh -huh. um, and so that's why we also get like the idea of like wrapping presents in white and red and things like that 
um also in those snow snowy areas like like um, people's houses would be snowed in through the doors and the windows so people actually had to go through the chimneys to get in and out so i'm like oh that was cute so maybe you should just do a bunch of psychedelic mushrooms and see where that takes you or like drawing wise <laughs> see where that takes you yeah that, I, that wouldn't be the first time <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> oh that's good <laughs> i've had a couple large trips that changed my life for the better yeah yeah same i mean very reflective you know? yes you always learn something new about yourself mm -hmm. yes and then yeah and in some way you learn something new about yourself which is pretty interesting um i was talking about that the other day with a buddy of like how we actually came to be with an alien intervention or did like you know prehistoric man just continuously eat mushrooms over time to develop their large cranium you know mm -hmm. like yeah I, I love that concept because I mean there is some connectivity that happens um when you do you learn so much so quickly about the, your environment and what's in your own brain it's because all the outside influences are gone yes yeah that's and true. you're actually connected to yourself and the universe that's true. That's you can true. understand things so much better. Yeah. Yeah. It, it kind of dumbs it down a little bit. Like, I'm yeah, not worried. It makes it simple. Mm -hmm. And then, then there's like the crazier stuff. You know, you get, I've talked about DMT before here on the show. And like, man, if, I mean, responsibly, um, I mean, I had a, an extraordinarily powering moment with that because I really felt like I knew my place in like the universe after that, you know, mm -hmm. I'm like, actually I have a painting that I have been working on. Just that you guys want to see a DMT trip. Okay. Here we go. Boom. Right. Oh, this way. That's awesome. It's getting there little bit by little bit. And I have it in oil. Nice. Thanks. I have it in oil as well going, but it's um it's a hard one. It looks yeah. very 3D. I like it. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I try to make it look like um I mean what it was, but it was like um a physical, tangible complex that you could go through. So I'm really trying to get that feeling of space and like you're in something. And that's that was pretty hard to because I mean, you'd have extreme foreground mm -hmm. and then most extreme background that I've ever seen visually in my lifespan. So like trying to figure that out as I'm like, whoa, <laughs> okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can see it. How do I make my hand do the thing? Well, yeah, and I've been looking a lot at, um, I'm trying to think like some of the old master's works as well, just like, uh, you know, a lot of biblical things have a, like similar perspectives, like yes. how like Renaissance painters like painted these biblical features of like land and sea meeting and merging. And I mean, the same, I, I feel like the, it's like the same perspective setup that I saw with mine, even though mine was very, I call it science, sci sci-fi, you know, organic. And, yeah. Uh, it, it, I can see the same setup. So I'm kind of using that as a crutch you know, to like find my key points and then go from there. But if I could finish this painting, you know, it'd be one of those. I'll die happy. Yes. Like, oh. Yeah. I'll be like, oh, I did it. Cool. <laughs> the notch on my belt, you know, one more gray hair blooms into my forehead. And then, yeah, I'm like, okay, on to the next. My gray hairs are all coming in in one streak. I love it. Oh, you have one too? Yeah. That's what I've it's got. It's very got punk rock. I like it. Mm -hmm, mm hmm very rogue that means we're doing good work that's what that means <laughs> I tell myself that every day it means we're doing yeah. really I didn't good. have a single gray hair in my head until my daughter got pregnant oh shit and then yeah. I went I started getting gray as soon as she got pregnant <laughs> I was like damn it yeah that makes sense uh my wedding night was my first uh, white hair 
<laughs> yeah. It's always a milestone. Yeah. <laughs> Not necessarily. I got started getting gray hair when I was like 23. And the only thing that was going on in my life then was I was going, I was drinking and partying because I was in my 20s and that was pretty fun. So you were red. That's it. We were just punk rock as shit. And so we lived real hard. Uh, and, just, and, I, and it grayed my hair quicker. <laughs> You know what? One of the most badass women that ever influenced me is the lead singer of Shroud Eater. Look them up. You guys would love them. Super good sludgy chick metal. But not nice. really chick at all. Like just dope. And I met her because she's friends with one of my friends. And I was like, what? <laughs> um, and she had the most beautiful, like fucking just, just loud and proud salt and pepper, you know? And she was young too, but she's just salt and peppery. And I, I, I love you because I know I'm going to look like you and this is rad because we look good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want mine to be streaks, but it's not coming out that way. Oh, we'll just like go the, in and tie it so it's streaky. Yeah, I think I'll do that. My mom had two gray streaks that went like this. Mm-hmm. And she looked like a skunk. Uh, yeah. Cool. And like, I really want that road look. Well, it's yeah. um, not- his mom from Harry Potter. She's got the coolest fucking hair. Yes. Uh, I'm not a Potter person. I don't even know who that is. You got to watch the movies at least. Movies are I watched a couple of them with my nephew when they first came out, like the first, second, and third one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's I like all. it when it's get a little dark, you know? Just like, I, uh, I, so my thing with Harry Potter is that I outgrew the Harry Potter universe before it was finished. Same. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like by the time the fifth book came out, I just had my 16th birthday and I didn't care anymore about a little wizard boy under the stairs. I was 16 and hormonal and I wanted to listen to punk rock <laughs> and chase boys and she should have been reading when Hermione and whatever was getting all weird and awkward and that was the later movie I read like the yeah. first three pages of the fifth book and was just like I'm bored what else is there I'm 16 I never read that. maybe like the first six chapters and I was like I'm too old for this I can't like I yeah can't, I, can't go on. I, did, I always kind of figured oh I'll circle back to it but I never really yeah. did it. and at that point like my life progressed and I grew up and I didn't care about little boys under the stairs anymore because I was all like you're a fucking wizard Harry why do I care about you you're fucking set I don't need to worry about you I'm gonna work on my own shit I wanted to know who Voldemort was and why was he so sexy that's what I wanted to know he had to be sexy because why would everybody follow him if he wasn't everyone so obsessed with him <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank you everyone knew there was something going on with Voldemort and I wanted to know <laughs> so I stayed in there and I was like I think the the guy who played him was fucking dope you know Ray Bynes. yeah he's awesome yeah he's a good actor yeah so I was like all right this is gonna be good <laughs> and, and so what I'm working on Yes, we see. Oh, I so saw like, that. I can't Instagram. participate in the Potter situation. I don't know these references. This is amazing. You did that. You awesome. Now you're speaking my language. Oh, thank you. I've got a hand of glory that I'm working on. It's watercolors. I am set up at my, oh, God. I'm about to fucking throw over the ring light at my new shop. Um, nice. I'm the only one here. It's fucking desolate. We have a holiday party in a couple of hours, and I just finished up with an appointment, so I decided to paint until the holiday party. And yeah, dude, my new shop's fucking awesome. The lobby is full of fucking skulls. Oh, perfect. And wet, wet specimens, taxidermy, and all that shit, actually. 
Oh, yes. I'm going to show you. All right. So, like this whole case. Oh, no. Wow. Yeah. There's all that shit. Like, these are like fucking real human skulls and stuff. Wet specimens here and all over. This guy's uh, got a mask because of COVID. Yeah. Fun. Uh, there's another display case over here with a bunch of wet specimens. And I think I haven't asked yet, but I think this is a vulture. Uh, oh, and I just noticed a snake in there. Ah, oh, that's cool. Oh my God. Yeah, and then here's, here's a, you probably can't see with the reflections, but here's a frog in a jar. Oh, nice. I can see him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. Nice. Here. What are Last you guys doing for your holiday party? Um, I don't know. I meant what sucks because I really want to see Bruno's thing tonight. Because mm -hmm. I know Bruno has been studying like all weekend and prepping for his guest little spotlight thing on the art night tonight. And the reinventing thing, but I got a holiday work party, and it's probably good for me as the new guy to hang out and get to know my coworkers. Yeah, that so, is a very helpful step. That's yeah, I mean, I already know two of them. Do I really need to know them more? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, uh, a couple of them are actually my friends from outside of work and um i've been getting to know my boss and there's one other artist here that i haven't met yet so i'm excited and i guess they're just gonna bring in food and a couple of artists from around town are coming to swing by and say hi no presents or anything just hanging out for the sake of hanging out and saying it's christmas this is an excuse to hang out yep i know that's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Are your folks in Portland? No, my folks are in Olympia, Washington. Um, oh, I did. I didn't go up there for Christmas this weekend because the roads here were too icy, mm. and I don't. And, you know, it gets dark at, like, 3 p.m. And, like, I don't like to drive in the dark. And it's, it's like, two hours away. And, like, with Christmas traffic, it's going to be, like, six hours one way. Mm -hmm. and it just seemed like a lot of work. So I just stayed home and got violently stoned and painted nice. for, like, two days. And I didn't even realize how much time had passed and that Christmas break was over. Because yeah. I <laughs> violently stoned. Um, don't do too many drugs, kids. Just some. A moderate amount. A moderate, yeah. Everything a mod in moderation. A moderate, a moderate amount of plants. Yeah, we're like sponges and we can only take so much. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I painted like nine postcards. In total. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and I started working on this guy. And I think I'm going to add in some white highlights on the candles, obviously. Give some mm -hmm. color glow on the hand, like it's reflective of the light. And mm -hmm. add in some pen. Why is Apple chasing? <laughs> <laughs> there it goes. Oh, no. oh, is it following you? I don't know how to change this it is trying to follow you oh, oh, my <laughs> oh my god leave me alone so That's anyway cool. yeah it's super okay. cool yep no. <laughs> i don't i don't fucking like apple You're, i don't like apples anyways oranges are way better so are bananas and strawberries yeah. literally yeah. so many things are better than apples so mm -hmm. fuck you Blueberry. 
Yeah, Steve Jobs. Jobs. I had a name. <laughs> for a second. Mm-hmm. So, but, yeah. I mean, how long? I mean, your move was a big move. You like got to thankfully move within the same city to a new shop, and you know, yeah. And after your like ridiculously stoned this, what's your routine of getting back to the workforce? How can people out there get back after the holiday eggnog uh, debauchery? I mean, <laughs> I didn't really have a whole lot of debauchery to get back from because, you know, I, I don't smoke the marijuanas and the devil's lettuce. Oh, you froze. Yeah, she froze. She froze. That was, a, that was a perfect place to freeze too. She was like, go on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, ultimately, you're all just yes, if anyone's listening and going, Oh, I've been with my family forever and I, you know, I can now get back to being an artist and a functioning adult within my tattoo studio. You know, mm. just get back. like for me, I just have to do it. I just have to open the book, start sketching. I just have to sit down at the drawing table, start drawing. I, I'll make lists of like the shit I got to do and just go from there. Like one little drawing at a time and I tackle what I can. And cause I um, like coming back from conventions is kind of like the same way. Like I'm so inspired. I'm so like wanting to do all the new things that I've learned from the show. But I also have like that, you know, oh, wow, I've just been constantly smiling for an entire weekend. And yeah. that, yeah, it's exhausting, you know. To have uh, to be on the whole time. Yeah, exactly. Um, which, you know, I've being a, an appointment-only studio for the last, like, five years now, it's really made me appreciate, like, walk-in tattoo shop owners and, watch like, walk-in tattooers because I did that for years. And pe- we were talking about, like, what would happen if we ever became a walk-in studio, which I don't see that happening still. Um, I'm like, man, I don't think I could be on that much, you know, like, yeah, cause I've done it for so long. And now that I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do it anymore. I just want to be like, Oh, Hey person I've already known and talked to and have an investment conversation in come on. Mm. Back to my- Let's hang out for eight hours. <laughs> you know, like they have to ring a bell. And I don't know, I just, I really appreciate, like, the owners of tattoo shops that are walking tattoo shops. Yeah. Like, that's power. That's, like, great. You know, they're people of the community. Like, they know how to, like, jive with most things. And I think that's just really, I don't know. I've recently really had that, like, understanding. I always thought they were cool anyways. But, like, whew, that's a lot. Um. And I know a lot of people are moving more towards the appointment only after COVID too, but you know, those walk-in warriors, that's a lot of on. Um, And to be on that much, it's got to be exhausting. Um, So I know there is a moment where you can like hide and just regroup yourself. Then I'm like, everyone do it. Hey, it's really hard to find a walk-in shop around me. Yeah. What area are you in? I forget. I am in New Jersey. Oh, okay. Really? Why Southern New Jersey. Oh, there's okay. lots of shops, but there's very few walk-in shops anymore. Most yeah. shops will do a walk-in day. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Like they have walk-in days twice a month. But right. other than that, almost everybody's exclusively appointment only. Mm-hmm. That's how it is here in Oklahoma. There's a couple walk-in shops. You know, and they're like, they're true staples. They've been there since the 90s or when yeah. it was like legalized. I mean, some of them have been there since the 90s. Um, but it's, yeah, it's becoming more and more common that people are, I mean, one, just either being safe about like, we all learn how to be safe during COVID so we could tattoo. And now, of course, like we've gotten used to that kind of regiment, I think. And we've yeah. all seen how good it works. You know, and I don't know, tattoo shops maybe won't be as chaotic in the future. Like, because 
walk-in shops. I mean, she, I was in Florida at a walk-in shop and it was every single day something absolutely insane happened. Mm-hmm. You know? so, like there was a naked guy in here with a taser and he wasn't tasing anyone but himself. You know, that was a Tuesday. <laughs> That's what you're into. <laughs> right? And so now it's just so calm and chill and I'm just very impressed with the industry lately of how how we've kind of changed it up a little bit, you know. Um, and it's good. I think it's like upping up a lot of standards in a lot of ways. Like mm-hmm. we have to like re we have to reinvent the wheel basically. And I've been trying to even explain that to my apprentice. Like she started literally like right after the COVID shutdown, you know, uh, was lifted, and. I was like, the world is very different. So as we navigate this, I just want you to let you know, like, we, I am navigating this myself. Like we all are. So, I mean, hopefully it'll just teach her how to think on her feet better. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's, um, I kind of like it. I, like, I really like the appointment only. Um, I get to reserve my emotional energy for things that are really good instead of mm-hmm. crazy. you know i mean that crazy naked man i'm sure influenced me in a positive way somehow i'm sure he just you gave know. you a story to tell that's for sure i mean yes see looking on the bright side kyle thank you <laughs> um but yeah i mean it, it made me really grateful for not that crazy naked man <laughs> very very grateful <laughs> yeah in a walk-in shop you never know what's going to walk in that door you never do ever ever how long have, have you experienced like i'm like i love every you know i feel like tattooers always want to know like the dirt like what's the grossest shit that has happened or like what's the craziest thing that has happened like at the studio you know, Kyle, have you experienced anything yet as just a, like an onlooker? Um, I have not experienced any crazy things just because I am in a private studio when I do hang out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I ever got any good ones? <laughs> oh, a couple. I had one guy come in to get tattooed who was head to toe sunburned. Ooh. I mean, yep. he looked like he had sun poisoning. Oh. And I'm like, are, are, I wanted to ask him, are you nuts? Just because of the amount of pain <laughs> that would cause. Not to mention the fact that if I tattooed that, it would just fall off. Oh, it would be terrible. Yeah, I had one, I had one person like that. They, their arms were so scorched. And he, was, he had a tattoo. He got a motorcycle in Florida. And was just like driving around and his forearms were just burnt to a crisp. Mm. And I, dude, I think you should go to the hospital. Like, this doesn't look okay. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. He's like, how's the tattoo look? I'm like, it looks terrible. What are you talking about? <laughs> I have a giant surface wound over it. <laughs> That's not okay. <laughs> but, you know, it's hard. Florida is hard. Anywhere there's a beach, it's, I feel like it's hard. Yes. Have a, I mean, most clients are respectful and treat their tattoos like they are open wounds and understand that it takes time to put them in their skin so they heal them nicely. But for some reason, I've, I've been to a lot of different beach type scenarios and it is very hard, you know, because you have like, surfers that are like are you kidding bro i haven't i haven't been murdered yet and you know and you're like but that's not the point <laughs> yeah trying to save you um but i always give little gold stickers if i can to my clients that take care of their work yes oh yes i had this one guy walk in one day i mean it, it for an appointment it wasn't like it was a walk-in we had this appointment set for two months and I swear the day he made the appointment, he stopped showering. Oh, mm-hmm. I had yeah. to turn him away. 
This is what you have to look forward to, Kyle. Yay. I had yeah. to turn him away. <laughs> I, I can't I can't tattoo you. You're going to wind up with an infection. Yeah, you smell. Well, I mean, it's just not even nice for the tattooer to be around that for so no. long. To endure that. And I mean, we are professionals. We can fake it and might be like, okay, let's put some of that salve under your nose and get to it, you know? But, uh, but not if. No, it, 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 it was bad. I went yeah. to wipe, you know, I wiped his arm with alcohol and it came black, black. Wow, that's bad. The, and I'm yeah. like, bro. <laughs> Nasty. Yeah. I, like, dude, you, you got, the, I, I, I don't know how to say this nicely to you, but you have too much bacteria on your body to be tattooed. Mm -hmm. You have to come in here freshly showered and scrubbed. That is actually a nice way to put it, you know, and I mean, everyone should do that. Like, even if you have paperwork that says that, you know, yeah. um, like sometimes you do have to iterate it again. I don't have a proper word for that. Um, but at least that, that, that is a nice way of putting it. Um, because, I mean, some people think they just are coming in for a quick little sticker and they're off, you know? I'm not yeah, sure. No, it's, a, it's a medical procedure, technically. You're creating an open wound. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's, yes, that's where a lot of people are. You know, just, I think it's education that's allowed to be presented to the um, like the average person, I don't think they're aware of every little nuance. Because I've surprised plenty of woke, quote unquote, individuals mm -hmm. that I would consider to be worldly or knowledgeable. That I mean, I and you know, after you do it every single day, of course, it's like common knowledge to us. But most people don't even realize how much of a wound it is, or how like lymph fluid like plasma uh works like what that is you know or yeah. like how scraps form like most people don't know a good amount of first aid um and i think if yeah i've been trying my hardest to like figure out what the recipe is you know for like ultimate communication but uh it just i just keep getting proved that you just have to say things like at least 10 different ways and then like one of so those ways we'll get through Yes, one of those will work because everyone's very different, you know. And I'm terrified. Oh my gosh, I'm opening my books um, for the first time in a while. And uh, I have some room for some new pieces. So I've been finishing and finishing. I've had a couple clients move here and there. Um, but yeah, I'm ready. I'm just like, let's do it. I'm just going to take a huge load, like, I don't travel until March, so I'll just be like drawing until then and getting everything ready and done. And then, I don't know, I'm stoked. Um, the bigger pieces, definitely. I don't have that um, instant gratification that I do have smaller pieces, I've learned. Like, um, I'm really excited for a piece throughout the entire duration of the appointment. You know, like every time I see the piece, I'm like, oh, it's doing so good. Cool, it's holding up yeah. really cool. But like, wanting to just start something new is like what's now been kind of tormenting me you know because I'm still really active in educating myself I try to like keep it going you know um keep myself smart against these young whippersnappers that are coming up um but I can't utilize it a whole lot unless I'm just like doing art you know but for tattoos oh I have so many tricks any tricks and I'm, I'm pretty stoked to uh, try them out Kyle like uh, think of it like gaming you get like a whole little satchel of tricks and then right. you're like the ultimate wizard yeah. <laughs> are you the ultimate yeah. wizard is that what you're trying not, to tell me not yet but I'm aiming for it I can see I'm it a, I'm like a young mage right yeah you're getting there yeah yeah, sexy young maid. <laughs> I'm more I mean, of a rogue. Ooh, yes. Can we just wear cloaks all the time? I'm just saying. I'm down. Does that make me the cleric then? Ooh, yes. yes we need a healer. Oh, yes. 
No, he'll have like a cute little bob that they do in like the Renaissance time. <laughs> little page boy. Yeah, little page boy bob. <laughs> scrolls all the time and like dropping scrolls on the floor we could yell at you and that's your whole job <laughs> <laughs> I fixed the scrolls um, only yeah. one in five of them work <laughs> that's awesome can we though that would be rad you know yeah. I was thinking, since we don't have like um, most people have titles in their companies and stuff like CEO and stuff like that like artists together we don't have titles and i think we should like there should yeah. be like an award ceremony of like you have now succeeded to mage <laughs> you know and you get like a badge <laughs> i fucking love those there's not that many of us we could do it yeah oh yeah you know and it's on a set scale you know like how many years you know what's your travels what's your weird shit you know like what's your niche what's your because, like, other businesses and stuff have these things, right? Have you guys ever thought about how we scale our value? Oh, I am writing yeah. a new seminar on that. Um, yeah, we um, lately it's through, like, Instagram and notoriety. And um, I've thought about this a while because of the art aspect of it. I can see a point of it, right? Like, fine art is based, like, valued is or how it's valued is based off basically who has owned it um who has made it you know where has it been like who has showed it and that like will really tell you the ultimate value of a painting so how do we value our value as the artists and the work that we're producing for people because we're we're also commissioned artists and i don't know I'm, i've been i've been trying my best to merge the fine art culture with the tattooing in my area for quite some time so I've had to really have these existential thoughts about it yeah um, so I have and also because I have a lot of younger staff with me and not so younger staff but people that have never really thought and sat down about what is their value you know like you go into a store you pick up a thing of soap that is the product um but we are the product you know so how do you yeah. value it so I thought of this scale of education experience, um, referrals, like, so like who, who would rep you, you know, um, niche, uh, actual technical application and skill level, like skill sets. So what all can you do? Cause now there's so many tattooers out there that can only do one style with one color, you know, so like how many styles and how many techniques can you achieve? Um, and yeah, like actually like making a model for tattooers and other artists to be able to like set their value on paperwork. Um, because I, I, like, I have a hard time as an, ugh, I'm going to say it as an artist saying I'm an artist a lot of times, um, because I'm very analytical. I'm very, you know, so it's hard for me to like sit down with someone who wants to buy a painting and explain to them why this painting costs this much, but I love it. Yeah. I'll be like, Oh, challenge me come on let's do this you know and but I give them numbers and facts and like you know equipment costs and like I break yeah. it down financially but you hear other artists stutter you'll hear them like uh they're so hard about the meaning and the, that but that is invaluable like that is but like yeah I don't know it's a weird it's a weird concept that they never taught me in art school and I really wish they had um yeah yeah. So as soon as I come up with it and I feel really secure with it and like, I'm like, I'll, you know, I'll be like, Hey everybody, what's your value? Who wants to dive into that? <laughs> I did it. I'm all right. I'm getting there. Not a wizard yet. Like where's Medusa? We can talk about Harry Potter some more. <laughs> she was so yeah. like, no. <laughs> I really can't get into the books, so though. They're really um, boring and weird. They were boring. I read all seven of them to my daughter as, you know, bedtime stories. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Put her to sleep. Oh, it worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I never got into them. The, the whole series. We're obsessed with the movies, though. Yeah, because the movies are, like, entertaining. And yes. Pretty. Yeah. 
And uh, I love the final movies because they just go all over the place, like all the sceneries and stuff that they uh-huh. go to. And if they're much darker mm-hmm. and more grown up than the first few that are very childish. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So it's it's fun. I like the I like the darker ones. I've never really had an urge to go to Florida, but now I do. Um, it's pretty cool if you go like to the Harry Potter thing. Yes. Um, if you do, I'll give you some input. I'll give everyone some input. This is on the internet. <laughs> um uh okay. First, you're in Orlando. If you're going to fly in, you're going to be stuck in Orlando. But if you get an opportunity to go around the border of like the whole Disney area, prepare mm-hmm. to see some Florida ass shit. Just prepare. And what you want to look for is some scary, shoeless looking kids hanging out by like a 7 Eleven. Mm-hmm. You've got those passes. So, for cheap for like nothing they're selling to you especially if you look like a tourist so look like a tourist a little bit you're safe but they'll come up to you be like yo and they'll say it real fast and you're like you want to pay off from it and just be like yes i do and you'll get one of those like straight through passes so you can just like skip all the lines yes Um, also if you just go buy a coke from a local gas station you get discounts on your tickets Hmm. so go buy coke or pepsi that's a good little tip yeah, it's all the little tabs on it. If you uh, bring really good shoes, like amazing shoes, bring a couple pairs because they'll get wet. It's wet. It's disgusting. Prepare to stand in line for a very long time. Um, and booze is just don't even drink. It's not even worth it. Um, and water is like, I don't know, six bucks. But uh, get the Universal and the Islands of Adventure Pass because there's a train so you can go to like the whole Harry Potter shit, but then you can go across the train and go to the Nocturne Alley, and that shit is dope. That's, That's where I want to go. Yeah, there's a tattoo shop in Nocturne Alley. Rob, you told me that. Yes, because we were there. Yeah, we were there together, and I was like, check this shit out. Um, and it's not like you can't go in. You know, it's like a mock-up, but the way that they mm-hmm. mocked it up is so fucking cool. And it's like how you think, like how they think that tattoos happen. Yeah, <laughs> because it's not like uh, like it's not real what they think is like there's like a thing and then it has all these hoses and that's where the inks come from and then it's delivered to the machine and so you just like push these little button things and that's what we're doing people don't realize that it's a power cord uh-huh. like, they think of it, like getting sucked in um and then they, someone actually hand drew all this magic flash everywhere and it moves and stuff like that. It's real cool. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Butterbeer is just straight diabetes. And uh, the roasted chicken, dope every time. And like the great tree hall dining place. Uh huh. I don't know. I'm very picky about like food in those kind of places. Yeah. That shit's dope. Like they pay, like they make it happen. Um, yeah, trying to get as many like little 3D passes as possible because that stuff is really expensive. Totally. But yeah, extraordinarily. Extraordinarily. So, but yeah, just go buy a Coke or something at a local thing. Like, just look around. You'll see like little deals, little discounts here and there because it's all over. They want you to like, as tourists, like go around, you know, you're like, oh, have you heard of Disney? It's around the <laughs> corner. Drink this Coke. You can get in. Um. But it's super fun. It's, I mean, don't go in summer. Don't do it. No. Mm-mm. I'd go in the wintertime. We want to take the grandkids. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How old are they? <laughs> um, when we, we want to go in like a year. We're starting to plan and put money away. So we want to go in like a year. By the 10, they'll be, by then they'll be five and the twins will be four. Ooh, they'll have fun. A really good stroller so they don't have to walk the whole time oh yeah we have a three stroller oh perfect yeah you guys will have fun it's really pretty especially during the winter time because then if islands of adventure has this whole like they make it snow oh nice yeah 
and um, you know they have like the whole whoville grinch thing going on um they have the avatar world i have not seen yet i heard yeah. there is a simpsons world and now i must see it oh the simpsons world okay it's cool but you have to realize it's been there forever uh, yeah, it's probably a little dingy by now. And you get the massive donut that's full of more diabetes. What's not yes. to love? Yes. And then, well, you have to like cross this body of water to get to it. So you like, you have to go over a bridge. And so you're just thinking of like, is Blinky in there? Like the three eyed fish, you know, because yeah. it's kind of disgusting. <laughs> you're like, man, they really went all out with this. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, the simple. It's fun. It is fun though. I know I always go towards like the newer stuff because that means they've got the better food. Food's very hit or miss the theme parks. Yeah, and by like the eighth hour you're there, you are starving. And anything sounds good. Anything, especially if it's like, oh, you got two chicken sandwiches, that will be $40. You're like, what? No, why? It's crazy. I know. But you're paying for the experience, you know? I just take, and um, I don't know, I'm, I'm a C, I am I'm I get seasick. I, like, I can't get jostled. I get sick. So there is a first aid unit in every single park, uh, pretty close by, and they give away free drumming. Nice. I guess they've had that happen before. <laughs> Me, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I have a special shirt from, uh, from Long Beach from a whale watching trip I threw up on. Oh, fuck yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize I was seasick until I went on the boat and vomited all over myself. Oh. Yeah. Better on the side. I've started that well. film. <laughs> did you see a whale? No, I did not. <laughs> but I'll have the shirt to always remember that day. That's true. That is true. Yes. Yeah, no, I am back in 2009. Uh, I just got like jostled really bad. And I guess it's like that little inner ear bone thing. And um, it's just never gone back into place. Like I've seen all kinds of doctors for it and like inner ear doctors and stuff like that, like ear and nose specialists. And no one can get that bone back in my head, right? So if anyone's feeling spicy. <laughs> I just want to not be dizzy when I spin, you know, I want to yeah. spin gracefully, damn it. <laughs> but I mean, I, I merrily live my life with my head down, so I really don't care that much. I don't think about it that much. But I'm sure if I was like athletic or something, that would be like life ruining, you know? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I feel so bad for people with vertigo. It's like the worst thing in the world. Mm. Mm -hmm. wow, I really didn't expect to give you such good Disney, like Disney advice on the show. I appreciate it. <laughs> that should be in the subtext, like um, holiday fun and Disney advice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, they go hand in hand, you know? You know? Don't go during the holidays. <laughs> no. No. Unless oh, you hate yourself. Yeah, unless you hate yourself. Like, even right now, a client just told me that Southwest canceled like a, a large amount of flights. Um, and I don't know, he was just basically like walking it through me and we figured it out. He's just going to drive to his appointment for Thursday. But I was like, oh my gosh, it was like a lot. It was a lot. And I'm just thinking of all those people that are stuck at the airport right now. You know, just enjoying the holidays at the airport i've been there it sucks i can't Kyle. imagine going to disney during the holiday oh people are crazy they do it though like they specifically do it for like the the cool holiday events yeah i know they put mm -hmm. on a pretty good christmas mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't mind do. spending Christmas in New Orleans. That'd be cool. It's beautiful there that time of year. Yeah, it actually is. It's like that seat, that little 
a humid breeze is really quite nice, actually. Yeah, I love it there. Mm -hmm. I do too. My mom grew up there. Nice. Yeah, that's uh, Renee is Cajun. I came very close to moving there. Oh, nice. And then was Katrina it, hit and my mother said, you are not taking my grandchild there. Yeah, I was going to ask. I had a couple friends that were planning on moving there too. And then Katrina hit. It was like, <laughs> gonna be like the next, like Portland. It was like becoming very hip. Yes. Like, very gentrified. Very like, they were putting a lot of money into things. And then all of a sudden Katrina just came and wiped it away. Yep. Kyle, this was before you were born. Yeah. In the in the far off days of like twenty, like what two thousand seven ish? Is that when it was? Oh yeah, back when we were young, beautiful young maidens. There was a giant storm that really sucked. Back in the aughts. Mm -hmm. But honestly, you know what's really weird about that storm? Because I think about it, like I always try to. I annoyingly will try to find the positive things and stuff i think because mm -hmm. i'm just dark um but i learned how to tattoo because of that storm like uh i was in a really shitty environment in uh downtown st pete like there were no girl tatters if they were oh i bust them i can't even think of what the fuck they had to go through and i got into a weird scenario where i was able to just like i wasn't being harassed and I was like helping basically this junkie, and I can say that now, it's really nice, um, take care of a shop. Um, mm. And then all of a sudden, this beautiful young Justin Swafford comes through the door. And he was a like a Katrina escapee, you know, and he lost everything, he didn't have his portfolio, he didn't have a machine, he didn't have anything, the entire shop was completely flooded and fucked. But his wife was with him. And had tattoos galore by him. And so I was like, cool, I'm going to help you out. <laughs> and so I convinced the boss to hire him. And that man became my good friend and taught me really how to tattoo. Like nice. if, if he didn't come along, I would have just been used and washed up and fucking, yeah. I would have just been like, yeah, there you go. That's what happened, Kyle, back in the day. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah it was pretty it was pretty gross but yeah because of him i definitely learned like my fundamentals and was able to like hold my own and so weird shit weird shit happens i know it sounds cliche but everything happens for a reason yeah really does it's kind of fucked up um i was talking yeah. about that yeah about uh lessons like life lessons are always yeah. very uncomfortable and I'm like, God damn it. When can I just stop having all these life lessons? Never. I'm done. I'm done though. I am done. Amber. <laughs> Life's not done with you. No yeah. More. No more Life lessons. Life is what happens when you're making other plans. I want no more lessons. I'm over it. I've learned enough. And the worst part is if you don't learn the lesson, the situation will present itself again and again and again until you learn it. Yep, exactly. Exactly. I know. It's, that's why it sucks. Like, I learned this one. Damn it. Oh. <laughs> Apparently, I didn't. Yeah, right. Apparently, not enough. I know it's hard to, it is, it is always hard to take um, people's advice too, because I find myself doing it like more and more the older I become in the room. And I just like, I know these people aren't fucking listening to me. Why am I like, I'll say it. Maybe some of it will stick. Some of it. I like, I honestly will just assume every single time I'm teaching anything at all that like maybe 5% of it is actually being sucked in. Well, I think a or lot of it too is it's like you can learn something, but there are some things that you just have to learn by doing. Exactly. Like you can only be warned so many times. Right. Like the true genius maybe is like someone that's like, you know what? I'm going to heal you and I will act accordingly. <laughs> when I think about all the lessons my mom tried to save me from learning. Yes. When, you know, in my teens and my twenties and I just had to learn them on my own. 
Mm -hmm. I sure as hell learned them though. I was, I think some of them I could have bypassed if someone was like, yo, don't do that. I was very much a, a like left on my own accord when I was younger. And I talk, I'm like, man, I would have been so much more of an adult by now, but that also could have sucked. So mm, I'm torn. I'm like, I just kind of had to figure out what was like annoying and what was not annoying, you know, at, for adults. Cause yeah. I was just a kid of a lot of other kids. So I was just really happy. I was remembered, you know, I was, like, I was, <laughs> wild. I was yeah. a wild kid. I grew up on a farm in the woods. Oh, fuck. Yeah. That's cool. I would have loved that. Oh, like, it was the- great. I, yeah, loved like, it. I was a wild kid. That's fun. I didn't, I never got in too much trouble. Just enough. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Just enough. Not too much. Um, I think me and my sister were pretty good. I mean, when we got older, I, I just stayed like real quiet. Honestly, my head was in my sketchbook or my book or something where my brothers and sisters were just like doing stuff. I don't know. They were distracting. I could tell. I felt bad. I was like, dang, my parents have got their hands full. And I was just like, go back to my book. (laughs) Yeah, if I wasn't drawing and listening to music at the same time, I was finding adventure. Yes, that was that's what I think I would love more because I did kind of grow up. I grew up in like Tampa Bay, St. Pete. It has some nice like naturey spots but for the most part it's like a pretty decent city and I wish that I was more out in the woods you know like I do feel more comfortable out here in Oklahoma yeah um, I miss being in the woods mm-hmm. yeah like someone just asked me if I would rather like move back to the city city because Oklahoma City is a pretty fucking big city yeah uh, like we're pretty progressive out here now um but I still like the land is cheap enough to where I can still live by the forest a little bit. And I don't think I would ever want to live like in a downtown scenario ever again, you know? Mm. It's a but whole was, other beast. Yeah, it's a whole other beast. Um, Cause when I was younger, I got a job offer to work in Philadelphia, like proper, like in the city. And mm. I was just like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> I love visiting the city. Yeah. Staying for a little bit and soaking up the culture and then going back to the woods. Right. Going home. Yeah. Yes. I just went to Brooklyn and all I really wanted to do was see the, see the city like from the Brooklyn Bridge, which I did, and get a shit ton of bagels. And that's it. I was like fully satisfied. I want to get the fuck out of there. Mm. (laughs) Brooklyn, cool. Looks cleaner than it did 10 years ago. Say that. Um, But yeah, it was too much. You know, I've uh, definitely become a little bit more docile. The the Jimmy Peak event that, um, you know, we all kind of go to here and there, like it's a little Mm. art painting. Oh my God. Like right now, that is my, my forest intake that I have, you know, um, which I like, like Gabe is helping. I know a lot of people out, but me out trying to get back into the the nature and just not tattooing as much and breathing a little bit more. Cause I mean, if I'm allowed, I will tattoo for just, I just won't stop. You know, my family will be like, Renee, what happened? You have like new nephews and nieces. What's going on? I'm like, oh, I've just been working. Sorry. <laughs> so I need I need someone to um, put their foot down in front of me and like make me go on a vacation or something or, you know. The necessary break you got to take. Yes. Yep. Where we go? There we go. Oh, we lost you. There you go. Sorry. It's amazing mm-hmm. how I tell people I'm on a podcast from this time until this time. And then 
they know I'm on a podcast and yet they call me anyway. Exactly. And they text me. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> well, I know tonight is not going to be a full night since it is, uh, you know, everyone's traveling, everyone's resting, people are still with their families and stuff. So I didn't want to keep it too long. But, you know, I don't know. I just really wanted to make something fun for people who are just like stuck at the airport or having a horrible layover that can just watch on their phone or something and be like, oh, there's other people that are live. They're actually doing stuff that's not like, you know, spreading sunshine with their families. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. They're like, no, you're not the only one, bro. We're all painting and being weird too. It's cool. Yep. That's basically it. I have so plenty of family time. <laughs> yes. No, I'm really glad that you guys were able to join me as well. That's been really rad. And Medusa, she's having a good time with her new shopper. Yes. And I'm so says, happy for her. I know, me too. <laughs> I'm glad she'll be able to um, travel a little bit more. <laughs> All good in the hood. So how is everyone's pieces coming out? Kyle, how's your triangle forming? Um, it's good. I've got two different triangles. I'll show you. Ooh. <laughs> oh, you don't say. Here's the, uh, here's the first one there. Oh, that's just some nice triangles. Nice. Yeah, a couple triangles, a little snowscape. I don't know, just mm -hmm. working with it. I didn't have a reference or anything, so just going nice. off my head. Nice. That's yeah. beautiful. And then I've also got this guy that I switched to and started, which was just like a photo from a river. Oh, that's a nice perspective. Yeah, thank you. I like that. I, I go to that one often. Like, I love little paths. Mm -hmm. Paths are dope. <laughs> yeah, I found this um, at just like a nice little park, a um, couple of towns over waiting for my car to get fixed. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. So. Yeah, snap a bunch of pictures and save them for later. Exactly. That's some good uh, plein air little tools there, sir. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. How about you, Amber? Have you been working on something? I actually got a couple shapes down. I don't know if I like them together, but I'll pick this up because it's taped down. Oh, nice. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Eventually, it's I might paint it. I don't know. I might scrap it. It's all about getting oh, the shapes down. The mm -hmm. fact that I've actually got my hand doing something when I was looking at the paper originally going, I have no idea. Exactly. I just That's know I need to part. fill this blank piece of paper. That's all it is. Like, honestly, um, I had someone that didn't do art at all come to one of my home paint nights, which I'm so excited about. We've actually been coming together more as a studio and might have to, like, get back on my in-person paint nights. It's pretty rad. Um, I was trying to do it during, like right before COVID really hit and um, it got weird for a second. So I, I pulled away and I was like, let's just do online paint night. That seems safe, cool. But um, someone like, if you don't know how to draw, if you don't know how to paint, if you just have the mediums in front of you and just start doing something that is literally the beginning, the end, the pausing. That is, we, we all do that, basically. Like, that is how we function. You know, we yeah. keep our moving. And that's exactly like what I was talking about before, about just getting, like, back in the groove. If, as long as I'm sitting down in front of my mediums and my tools, I am working. And I tell myself that. And that is what helps me move into the rest of the week of, like, Oh, that's right. I know how to do this. I know what I'm doing. I'm working. This is what I do. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. So it's getting familiar, you know, even though it's only been a week, it's only been a couple of days, it's only been a month, it's only been a, like you are always a new fresh born babe walking into a room and you haven't been doing it every day. And that's how I feel about art. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and so it's always something just to get yourself familiar and warmed up. And all of a sudden, you'll just be making images, you know, that makes sense. And you'll find your way. And it's about just chilling out. Ooh, I promised Medusa that I would do this. She's not here. Oh, wait. 
This is Mary. Oh. Oh no, this this is Pippin. Sorry, they're twins. Look at the fluff. I know. Mary, Mary somewhere. I can't have a cat anymore. My granddaughter's allergic. Oh, that sucks. When, she, when she's old enough to be able to take Claritin and things like that, things might be different, but. Oh, yeah. Because she loves cats. They're so, yeah, if they're good, they're good, you know? Like, they're just sweet. And uh, um, these boys are about uh, a year and a half old. And I'm re- I feel really lucky. They've been really, really sweet. And they're twins. So, like, nice. double the fun. Nice. Double the fun. Yes. I think Mary's sleeping somewhere. But um, here, I'll show mine. I started this little mountain scene that I've been thinking about um, lately. And... Um, I don't know. I just kind of miss it. I've been missing my traveling a little bit. And one of my favorite places to go is New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And there was a moment where I was like, I felt so tiny in my life because I was standing and like looking down at all these mountains. And I was like, Oh my God, that's cool. I don't even exist. Um, And yeah, I just can't get them out of my head. And I still like remember it pretty clearly. So I think I think I got enough down to be like, check it out. Um, oh, oh wait, no, this way. This way. Um, and these are some nice mountains that I think we're going out to um Method Sound. And yeah. this is like a, this was like in the middle of the drive from Queenstown to Method Sound. It's beautiful. So, it's gorgeous and I can't get out of my head. I miss it so much. So I bet. Some nice like sunsetty things going on over there too. And yeah, I can always paint mountains. I'm a, I, I can always do the Bob Ross thing. Yeah, when I can't figure out what to paint, messy flowers is my go-to. Mm-hmm. That's what I did last time because I was, I was it's, usually if I'm at my house, I'll have my watercolor. Um, and then if I'm at the studio, I'll have like my oils and stuff. But yeah, I've been into like, I don't know. I was like, I kind of go in between like birds, flowers, mountains, like scenery. I haven't painted a good bird in a while. I should. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I kind of just like, like more organic things a little bit of character and especially if I can remember it like I can usually remember scenes really well yeah um I'll go for that like sometimes I'm really I can do it with a with birds but I have to be in a certain headspace for that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but let's see I'm gonna check on our path. oh okay cool we're rocking and rolling um yeah I don't know how you guys felt about just having an early night tonight Mm, it's not a bad idea I'm starting to get hungry I think I should get something to eat I know I just had a wave of wine hit me again (laughs) I was like not hungover all day and now I'm just like oh and I'm like you know what that one time that Gabe just laid down because of drink and draw like this is my chance (laughs) 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 <laughs> but um uh let's all thank kyle for getting us on here yes <clears throat> good job kyle yeah thanks thank kyle. you kyle the tech guru kyle you're the best i'm glad i was uh, able to help out and make it happen i know no thank you oh sorry that's it again um no yeah absolutely um next time yeah let's go over it and i'll just learn from you i won't wait for the big boys i'll just ask you Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll get you uh, situated for next time. Make sure we're working right. Okay, cool. Sick. Thanks. Perfect. Um, okay, cool. I'll sign us off. Um, thank you so much uh, for reinventing the tattoo, for letting me have this nice 
art paint night, draw night, anything, anything goes. Um, you know, I try to keep it loosey goosey and fun and um, just so everyone is making art and getting used to art and getting comfortable with art. Um, and, and so, yeah, yeah, if you ever make it, come yeah. join it or not, listen. Um, Kyle, you wanna say goodbye? Amber, you wanna say goodbye? Uh, oh, Kyle, yeah. you go first. Sure, sure. Um, thanks for joining. You can find me online, Skies of Fire Tattoo, if you wanna see more of what I do. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Amber, go ahead. I'm Amber from Morgan from Mays Landing, New Jersey, and you can find me on all social media platforms under Amber Morgan. Awesome. All right, awesome. I had a great time tonight. Thank you for hosting. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. All right, Thank later. You. Bye. Bye. Thank you.